boy, do we got a story to tell y'all. First of all, if you are watching this, you obviously know who I am. You may or may not know who they are. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm the dude that saved Eric's life yesterday. Uh, that's not. That no, wasn't me. I'm nope. the dude that put Forty in the position to save Eric's life yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, we may or may not be joined by him later on, but a friend of ours, Willie Watts, I'll put his at somewhere on the screen, had his Scott bike stolen a while back, and everybody's been on the lookout for it in the Phoenix area. Last night, we were out riding bikes, and what are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. You are a toddler. Last night we were out riding bikes and somebody's what the fuck? I'm putting it back. I'm putting it back, please. What are you doing? I'm putting that back. You fucking around with you. You trying to get me in trouble on camera? That's crazy. <laughs> Pussy ass. Pussy bitch. Last night we were out riding bikes and was it you or was it who who spotted the bike first? Me and Molly spotted it like at the same time, but I said something first. So they spotted a crackhead on. Uh, Willie's Scott bike. So I might put a map up for reference, but it was on what what, what streets is that on? Ah, third Third Avenue Culver. I'm gonna need you to Third Avenue Culver. I'm gonna need you to be an adult. Third Avenue Culver is literally where we were. Right there in front of the Hans Dog Park. Yeah, right, right by Hans Park where we all meet up. Third Avenue Culver. I don't like how you don't, you're treating me like that guy from yesterday. I gave him the little Arizona <laughs> instead of the big one, and he's over here acting like a toddler now. This is little. And wouldn't you know, there's a whole nest of them over there. <laughs> so we're all of a sudden in the crack shack, basically. And... We're all trying to figure out how we're about to get this bike back. It's like, what, seven or eight of us? He, I thought. Um, I thought too. It was seven or eight. <laughs> it, was like, it was like seven or eight of us, and we're kind of in a circle. The crackheads are, you know, peeping that we're looking at their bikes and checking out what's going it's on. It's like so, five of them. Yeah, it was about five of them, and they're coming over. We're trying to get this straightened out. We're like, yo, you know, this looks like our friend's bike. And in the midst of us asking questions, our uh, mullet savior – just picked that bitch up and rode off with it on his shoulder. And <clears throat> while that happened, they were kind of confused. He caught them off guard. Caught everyone off guard. Caught everybody off guard. But I was off my bike for some reason. And they grabbed my bike. Then this dude with like some bald head to do with tattoos grabs me and puts a backpack right up in my side. Basically like taking me hostage, acting like he had a gun. I didn't know if he did or didn't at the time. And... It was like a it was like a standoff at that point. It was like four homeless people pulled you limb by limb. They were yeah. I was surrounded on each side by like four or five people, <coughs> who two of them had a hand on my bike. I'm gripping up my bike. Not you know, obviously I'm not letting it go, and like half the half of everybody scattered. They they all got scared and scattered away. CJ stayed. You stayed. A couple others, and we were all basically at like a. I just like a little, little Mexican standoff, you feel me? Like, we're trying to get it straightened out, trying to figure out how I'm going to get out with my bike. He was already long gone with the Scott by then. So we made a couple calls. I contacted the owner of the bike, told him where we were and what was going down. I think you did, too. Did you call him? The first person I called was Izzy because I didn't have Willie's information like that. And I was like, yo, I got Willie's bike on my shoulder. So then he <laughs> sent me the number right away, and I called up Willie. And he he sounded very happy on the phone. I was like, yeah, definitely. This is definitely your bike. I've got it. Yeah. I'm trying to stay hidden so nobody pulls up on me. Yeah. The whole time I was thinking he was going to get the bike into his truck and then just take off with it and, you know, get put some distance between them. But he ended up taking off on his bike. Uh, where did you go? Far. To down the darkest alleys and the darkest he streets was, I could. <laughs> he, he threw the shyest thing on and he was keeping a low profile with the bike. Um, meanwhile, 40, me and CJ are all, you know, trying to get this basically planned out and figured out with this group of crackheads. Cause they took your bike. Cause I took their bike. Yeah. They were basically like, oh, you, like, your boy's not getting his bike back until we get ours back. And 
things were getting more tense. Like the couple of dudes right there were ready to fight, but we weren't trying to escalate the situation any worse than it already was. Um, me and Forty kind of kept our we kept our composure, trying to keep it, you know, from getting to that point because we didn't know what kind of thing they had. The most weapon I saw from the dude was a like a drumstick. No, yeah. it was no, it was like a broken off like broom handle oh, was with it? a point. I was like, from, from the distance, it looked kind of like a drumstick where I was standing at. Because you guys, when you guys pulled up, you guys were like all grouped up by the bike a little bit. You guys were like standing like three or four feet away. Yeah. I was a good 20, 30 feet away with the mask on, just standing there waiting because people kept coming up and looking at the bike. <clears throat> Once everybody stopped coming up looking at the bike, I was like, all right, now's my chance to just nonchalantly roll up, pick it up, and then go off with it. And I did, and once I got like ten feet away, I just heard someone go, "Hey, he's stealing my bike!" And I'm like, "Well, I'm I turned, I turned, and I just saw you with the bike over your shoulder, giving the little look back." And <laughs> I, I was dying because I was like, "All right, cool." Mullet took off, like he's straight. Like we'll get everything figured out on this end on how to get my bike back. But like tensions started to go up a little bit. Like we're trying to talk him down off it. One of the dudes started just smoking something out of a foil. Like if if y'all are familiar with drugs. And you know what he was smoking, let me know in the comments. But he was lighting up something with a little, little, little you feel me? He, he, he was stressing him out. He was, talking nah, about? he was powering up. He was getting his senses he on. He was, he, was he, was about to, he was about to. <laughs> that guy who he was talking about was trying to bully me the entire time. Yeah, he wasn't hearing nothing we were trying to say. But he, no, he only wanted to hear you and CJ talk. And every time I tried to say something, I had too much bass in my voice, or I was yeah. talking to him some type of way, or I was being loud. And so it was maybe like 20 minutes of just kind of back and forth nonsense because they weren't, there was no obviously reasoning with them. We were just trying to think of a plan on our end. I was hoping somebody would come up with something. I don't know where half the people went. I don't know. I don't know where half of them went. Nobody was. It was just really us there. Um, this was all like a two-hour-long deal that felt like it, twenty minutes. No, it was. It was thirty minutes long. From well, for you, because you left right after you got your bike, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. You, I, yeah. So things started to escalate, and they basically came to the conclusion that, like, all right, your boy, me, is not leaving with his bike, and this like lesbian chick and some other girl and this dude are all kind of like pushing me away from my bike i let it go because i got a better chance of getting on it you know while i'm not holding it down trying to yank it away from him that's not gonna work so i just let the girl go on my bike a few of the boys that pulled up chased her i hopped on the homie bryson's pegs and we it sounds like it's just looking back on it it sounds like some little kid shit this is hilarious but like we all took off and chased her up central we cornered her in the parking lot nobody got you know beat up or roughed up or nothing we kind of just told her, like, yo, like you, you're not leaving with this bike. She was outnumbered, like, six to one. And we got my bike back. She took her L. And we all got back to the cars and bounced out. And then I went home. I don't know what y'all did. I know you guys met up with Willie somewhere to get the bike straightened out. Yeah. yeah so I I kept riding and riding. And then I, you know, I tried calling 40 just to make sure, like, everything was all right because – I dipped, and then I don't know what happened after that. I did everything they're telling me is news to me. I didn't, I didn't experience none of that. It's cool to sit down too because I get your side of it because I don't know what you did when you left, and then you don't know what we did. Yeah. You, where were you when when she took off with the bike? So at one point, when they finally had enough of my of my talking, they was like, "You go find them." Uh, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah." You. I'm like, you know what? All right, I'm I'm finna go look for them. I'll be back. And I went to your truck. Because I was under the impression that you were at your truck. I don't know you left so far. Yeah, I want to get that. As I'm leaving, I'm passing by the homies, and, I, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing over here, like, way over here? Like, Was everybody <coughs> just posted up in a little group outside of the park, or what? One of them was, like, 30 feet away from where we were. I'm like, yo, like, just go over there and just watch his back. That was, like, that don't was let the, him get manhandled. Like, That was for sure the disappointing thing to me, because, like, I figured some of the boys would have my back. Like, I was surrounded literally on all sides by people, so I don't know what... If they were going to do something to me, if they could have, they could have easily snuck me or did some other shit, but nobody was around me. You were on my side. CJ was on my other backside, so, like, at least that end was covered. Somebody else was way over here, half the group. But still, you, me, and CJ were outnumbered, which is the problem. Like, yeah. We outnumbered them had we stood together, but we we didn't. Even, even with me taking off with the bike, you guys still outnumbered them. 
Yeah. yeah. Even, and I had that too. This was the one time that we go out and ride and nobody had their self-defense on them. Like nobody, nobody had it with them. <laughs> Usually it's like, okay, yeah, I'm good just in case. I'm good just in case. And had that been the case, it would have been, it would have been easy. Like that, that yeah. whole situation would have been five minutes long instead of half an hour, but but uh it is what it is we're gonna learn from it i know what i got on my shopping list next but <laughs> yeah so what happened was we come to the conclusion that we're about to negotiate for the bike type shit just kind of situate it and i'm like uh I, let me go get mullet let me find where he is and try to orchestrate this see how we're gonna go about this and uh mullet's hella far i at this point I get word that uh, Willie's on the way, so then uh, I tr I turn back around to head to where you are, but I see Willie's there. He's already there, so I just go and peep real quick, and they're still talking. I'm like, all right, I'm now I'm gonna go get Willie, and then that's where I leave to go get you. Like once w Will's already there, and uh, that's that's when all that other shit happens. But yeah, when they grabbed him. It looked like they had a gun, and he, and what? So he took off with the bike. We're all there's like six of us looking into his phone. There's like four of them, and just me and him looking into his phone, yeah, trying we to were, identify the bike. We were trying to like fake. I already knew. What I didn't. I wasn't was. sure. Which is, I, I was like almost about to conclude that if I'm gonna keep it a bean, like you did stall it a little bit. But I, I'm, I'm when it comes to bikes like that, there's not too many of them out here. So they grab him. And we're right there. We're, we're starting to like, oh, he took my bike. Uh, so we're taking his bike. But like, they, they kind of came to the conclusion, though, that that wasn't the bike because the pictures that were posted were different rims than what were on the bike. And I didn't hear nothing about the conversation that you guys had going on. I just saw the opportunity and I took it. And I'm glad you did, though. And for an outside perspective, for people who aren't familiar with the bike scene or with bikes getting stolen or anything like that, people take parts on and off all the time. They change the colors of things, they'll spray paint wheels, like, it's like regular cars, they'll, they'll change it up as much as they can, and if there's one little difference on it, they'll be like, no, 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 that's not the same bike, that's not the same bike. Like, parts, they're interchangeable, they come off, things like that, it's, it's they Frankenstein them all the time. So that's why I was so sure that it was his, because I could tell by the size too, like his bigger bike, because Willie's kind of tall. Yeah. Well, it's so, also what, one of 13? Yeah, like, there's there's not going to be another green sky bike out here. That's why I was like, I'm, I'll pass off to Mullet for taking it and just taking the initiative and bouncing out with it. We we didn't have the exit that we wanted, but we still got out. I got my bike back smooth. I really, so when I saw her take off on my bike, for anybody who doesn't know, I ride a brakeless fixed gear bike, and they're a little harder to ride than, you know, the big bikes, the cruisers that are easier to sit on and manage. So don't when she took off, I was like, I know she's not going to get far on it because. Don't call it a cruiser ever again. Proceed though. I don't got a beach cruiser like 40. Um, anyways, that's that little Arizona energy. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like it's easier to ride those bikes. Yeah, you got like a, like a, um. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, like a, go ahead, say something. Like a little. You got like the Huffies, right? Yeah, like a bitch bike. Like the, no, I think that's you. Is it your bike plastic? No, no <laughs> Walmart, right? Plastic, Walmart. You can't leave your bike in the sun, can you? Yes, I can. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I can leave my shit in the sun. Your shit gonna flake. Go ahead. Wow. And you see the hatred? This is the... These are my homies. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> gets, one blink, gets one blink put on his head now he... Chill. It was, a, it was an imaginary blink. But at the time, too, I didn't know because I just saw him swing his backpack to the front. He shoved his hand in it, and then he put the whole bag set up, up to my, like, up to my back, to my side. And at that point, like, my hands are up. I'm not going to – I was on the fence between should I just try to hit him and get out of this situation or should I just <coughs> – when, when he didn't pull nothing out, because I, if I would have saw a gun, then it would have been a whole different story. But he wanted to just act like he had one, which he, he didn't. He fooled us. He didn't. But – yeah, it almost escalated a lot of time. There was, we were giving each other looks for, for like 10 minutes, like, okay, should like, do, is, do we do it now? Do we like turn up now? Do we like kind of, but it's just hard because we're in the, we're kind of like in a standoff type shit. 
Yeah, it was real tense for a while. And uh, there's a point where the tall guy who eventually powered up, <laughs> he was trying to bully me the entire time. He was just trying to like pick on me, try, trying to make a statement, like use me an example to make a statement. And uh, one of his tweaker friends saw that and took that as an opportunity to use me to make a statement too because he eventually put a mask on and he got behind me. And he's just like lurking on me, like pray he's praying on me like if he's about to do something to me. So then I'm like, in my head, I'm looking at Eric. Eric's giving me a look. And then CJ's also like, lurk. CJ's lurking. CJ's definitely lurking. They're not paying him much mind. But I'm like, I think I got to take off on this on this tweaker behind me first. And then we could just like set it off and we could get out of here type shit. I didn't know what was going to happen. Because like, mind you, I'm shoulder to shoulder on both sides with them. Like, I was, I was deep in an area where I couldn't get back far enough to swing or like, and it's kind of hard because you're gonna have to fight off women. So it, it was it was a it yeah, yeah. Some, some lesbian chick, some other girl, I, I a did, real did tall she dude. Identify as a girl? You you don't know these days, so it's kind of. I think she got bigger problems to worry about than yeah than her identity. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if we're gonna keep it a beam, but I couldn't even pull my phone out. I'm getting calls from like my girl for something else. I'm getting calls from the homie Izzy. I think Will hit me back. I don't. I don't know if he did, but I'm like my phone's going off. I can't really get to it because then that's gonna go. But I think they're gonna take that. Not only that, but you don't want to. You don't want to stop paying these people no mind. Cause yeah, and I got to keep an eye on what each of them is trying to do and just get in the sense of where. So they're dude, at. come from the bushes. He has like a drumstick in his hand, and uh, the guy who originally had a gun, he he was acting like he was gonna like. After he got done with him, he was trying to he he tried to approach me, but he like changed his mind. And he just left. He disappeared, and and then it was six of them and three of us. So when so then I ended up leaving to go locate this <laughs> this, this. and uh, it was funny. I called forty. I was like, "Is everything all right?" He's like, "Fuck no, they got everything." <laughs> and I was like. I was like, well, damn. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fucked up that whole situation. Said, no. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> they said we're smoking Everpack. <laughs> yeah. I did that. And it's oh funny because as we're talking about that, a Prius runs a fucking stop sign and is about to <laughs> obliterate me. And I'm just on the phone with Mullet and I'm yelling at the top of my lungs that this Prius is about to kill me. So, yeah, like, it, it was crazy because we all got split up into different groups at, like, when the time, because... Things were starting to get a little bit more tense because at that point, Will had showed up and he thought I, I he might have been under the impression that like we had his bike there because I think that, that might might have been what he was expecting. We may talk to him later if he shows up and becomes a part of this video, but he showed up and then he was going at it with them. Tensions are starting to flare because they're like, who's this guy? Um, and he mentions that he had called the police because when the bike got stolen, he made a police report. You know, he did everything the right way. And the girl that had my bike was basically like, oh, I can't talk to the police. Whatever reason, I'm on probation, whatever. So she took off on my bike alone. And that was, you know, when everybody chased her down and we got the bike back, which was honestly best case scenario because, like, she was alone. We were separated from the group. But when y'all left her, <laughs> if I didn't hop on Bryson's face, I'd have been by myself with the swarm of crackheads <laughs> on foot with no means to escape other than my goddamn hooves. I don't even know how Will got from Deck Park to Up Central, like near where we were at. He That man moved fast as hell because he got, once we got my bike back, we, we hit like a U-turn and basically came back the way we rode, followed her from. And then Will's at the corner. I was like, yo, like, are you good? I'm making sure we're all straight. Everybody got to the cars and then you guys, I guess, contacted Will or... How yeah, so, like, what, right when I got out of the park, I made it, like, a half mile down the street. I hit the dark alley, and I called Izzy, because I know that was his boy. And, like, yeah. he, they know each other, and I was like, I got Willie's bike on my shoulder right now. He's like, I'm going to send you his number, so he sent me his number. And at first, he was like, I'll send you an Uber right now. Where are you at? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I got too much for Uber. I've got my bike and your bike, because I saw your bike, and I swooped it and yeah. took it. And he was like, thank you so much, but... <laughs> like I was like I just kept moving I just kept going I didn't didn't want to get spotted or nothing so I kept going everybody was asking me where I'm at and I'm like I don't know where the fuck I'm at and I'm gonna keep moving 
And then I eventually found the church and uh, I called 40 and he was like, you're going to have to come back with that bike so we can get Eric's bike back. And I'm like, eh, like <laughs> four or five miles away, I yeah. ain't riding back. And then if you want this bike, it's not going back there. No, we were. So my plan wasn't to give the bike back. My plan was that since I, in my head, I'm like, oh, Willie's already on his way. So there's no way they can tell the owner of the bike that's not his bike. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, if we if we get want to avoid uh, engaging in, in in fisticuffs with these tweakers, we let we let Willie negotiate and uh, we just avoid harming anyone. And Eric gets his bike and Willie gets his bike. But I can't go back because I already told him that I don't know him. I would just try to orchestrate that. Another key piece of information, though that he made a police report on his bike because it was worth more than $10,000. And that has to do a lot with the charge of whoever were to yeah. gotten in trouble for stealing it. You know what I mean? So like, now my question is, like, I know he contacted the police before. I wonder if they went looking for those people. Because I'm sure he has, he obviously had a description. So yeah, he said that afterwards. He said that she took off her shirt, so changed the description right away. So they're not going to find a person. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like sure last that, night when I... When I took off with the bike, I had a gray and black flannel on. I took that off. I'm wearing a blue shirt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what I would do. <clears throat> Anything close to a gray and black flannel. Yeah. I, I honestly, for the life of me, if they would have asked me, could not tell you what you were wearing other than a shiesty. <laughs> I, I could not describe you for that. Like, you were the perfect ninja in that. I was only wearing that because it's kind of cold out, and I didn't want my face to get cold. I'm, God bless the shiesty. <laughs> Whoever make them, we need a sponsorship. But, man, yeah, that was the whole ordeal. Uh, we may be joined by the owner of the bike a little bit later on so he could tell his side of the story and how his kind of night went down. I know he's getting off work right now, getting the recovered bike checked out by a shop, just making sure everything's all good to go with it. But in the meantime, this may or may not be the end of the video. We just wanted to hop on here and tell our story because we had a crazy night. If you ride bikes in the Phoenix area, don't go to Deck Park. Don't go to Deck Park for a little while. Be on your toes. To all the boys that we ride with, it looks like we're going to be doing Tempe for a while. Um, I rode back through the park last night and it was cool. Did you for real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't. Look, you're looking for more stolen bikes. Let's, let's <laughs> yeah. He said, keep a blinky on you. And don't get shysty. And a shysty. Keep a blinky and a shysty on you, but don't for, smoke perks. Don't smoke whatever he was smoking. And drink some water. Shout out to Bud Bros. Shout out Bud Bros. Shout out Healy's. Shout out Unity. Shout out Unity. Shout out Ponderosa. Shout, shout out Unknown. You feel me? Shout out Throne. Shout out Throne. Shout out Throne. Shout out Throne. <laughs> I had a little. It was a fly. Shout out Willie Watts. Yeah. Um, well, that's for sure. Unfortunate what happened to your bike but we got it back for you but at least it's in, it's, it's safe it's back in home this is the first recovered bike in the community like this always lock it up whenever you go somewhere and that's gonna be it <laughs>